Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. As always, I'm here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. And can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica. And today we have the pleasure of having um, a new member to the show. And he is here today to talk to us about water privatization. His name is Kofi Ose, and he is the elected township supervisor for Talmadge Township. And we're here to find out about privatization, what's going on in Talmadge Township, and how we can get involved and help and support the work that's being done there. Thank you so much, Kofi, for being here. We really appreciate it, especially at such short notice. And thank you so much for having me. I, I really like talking about this topic. Well, you certainly do a lot of work. I yeah. looked you up. I was like, okay, yeah, he's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to talk about this. Um, and it's really, we've, you know, it really has been a conversation on our show for literally the last six months. It seems like globally um, you have like this push to privatize water systems all over. So it felt really, really important to talk to you about it. And since it's a short show, we're going to jump right in with the first question. Um, can you tell our viewers about, about Neighbors Opposing Privatization Efforts, also known as NOPE, which I love that, and why it was founded? Yeah. Um, so here in, in Pennsylvania, uh, they passed a law in 2016 that um, Encourage the the privatization of water and uh, wastewater utilities. Um, it was Act 12 of 2016, and what it did was um, made the the valuation of these uh, utilities based on uh, fair market value as opposed to uh, depreciated costs. Um, mm. So what you're seeing is uh, these utility companies like uh, Aqua Pennsylvania and uh, American Water um, are offering uh, three or five times the um, uh, depreciated cost of these systems, uh, and then they are entitled to recover um, their their purchase price or most of their purchase price um, through rates. Um, so, uh, Nope started as Norristown opposes privatization efforts. Uh, it's a town uh, about twenty minutes away from me, uh, with David McMahon and his uh, local council was going to sell their sewer system and he he needed to rally his uh neighbors to stop that so he, he started the the first nope group and uh they were successful in petitioning um their neighbors to to get a referendum on the the ballot um Great. and that the uh the water company aqua um actually just backed out before it even got to to ballot um, so just that effort of, of getting enough signatures to get it on the ballot was enough to scare them away. That's um, great. And then David kind of knowing that this is going to happen town by town, he kind of changed the Norristown in the end to uh, neighbors and kind of kept helping uh, every other town. And that's how I, I met him. And we connected when uh, my township board was considering uh, privatizing our sewer system. Um, so right now I'm continuing that effort of, you know, going town by town and helping other towns, um, as well as we are uh, trying to push to repeal this law at the state level um, and also, you know, offer some legitimate solutions because some of our infrastructure is old and yeah. we, we do need to figure out how to, you know, upgrade our infrastructure with also not like burdening families um, too much with the, the yeah. cost. So, yeah, the whole, um, the whole country needs to be the, the infrastructure needs to be replaced, but it can't fall on rate payers because most of us are already having a hard time making our ends meet. So it has to be done, you know, federally and um, with those dollars. It has to, it can't fall on rate payers. Yeah, definitely. Um, can you tell us what the reasons were that people should oppose 
privatization because a lot of people when they hear privatization they don't actually understand what that means so they think oh it just it just means it's going to be a private company mm -hmm. um they don't realize how oppressive the privatization of water is to a community and to the people in that community so could you explain a little bit of like why it's important to oppose this yeah um the the big one is cost for sure um i, I think right right now um most of the the water utility companies and investor in utilities charge uh, double or triple the rates of um the the municipal systems um mm -hmm. so the, right off the bat that is way too expensive and um i think the number is like three percent of household income is what you want for your your water utilities and mm -hmm. yeah th these investor owned utilities regularly get get over that um and then there's this lack of uh local democracy that that's really important when um, I want to complain about my my water or sewer system. Um, I, I can go to these public meetings. I, I have a phone number I can dial and, and know I can reach someone that is local to the community. Uh, when I'm dialing the number for the investor and companies, um, it might go to India for for all I know. And you know the the shareholders don't necessarily care about what's going on. Uh, at my household, but I, I know that my neighbors might care a little more, uh, the ones running these systems. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's also some, some reliability issues. Um, right now, the, the way federal dollars are set up, it is, uh, preferencing these, uh, municipal systems for, for wastewater in particular. So you have this problem where you're selling these utilities and you're also having to pay more for the, the upgrades anyways, because we, we already set up these federal programs to, to do these upgrades. So, um, yeah. As, and, you know, there's something about keeping water as a commons in your community, too. Mm -hmm. You're automatically, as you're, you're right, your neighbors are automatically going to care for it in a different way and make sure that people can afford it and that it's safe for them and all of those things. Well, anytime that you privatize um, and that, it, you know, you lose complete control over it complete control over any kind of, um, uh, you know, the whole community loses any kind of control over any kind of oversight, holding people accountable. Like yeah. those things go out the window with privatization and the corporations like corporations like Veolia and the places who are buying, or, you know, the, that are buying mm. up water systems around the world, they are monster corporations. Like they, they really don't care if you have safe, affordable water. They like, don't, you know, I mean, you got the, the uh, CEO of Nestle who came out a few years ago and was like, you know, water really isn't a human right and we can definitely charge you for it. it. You know what I mean? Like that's how they think it's really diabolical and harmful, but that's how they think. So you hand yeah. over the whole kitty to this, to a corporation that does not care about you. And that, that is um, so important to oppose it. And it, it was really nice that you said that they folks got together and were able to kind of get that first win. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's like that's it doesn't get any better than that to to light like a fire under people and say, oh, we do have a say in this. We can fight against this. It's really it, it really is uh, hopeful at that point. It's sad, too, because um, a lot of people don't understand that, like companies like Veolia, like we have to do our due diligence and do research, yeah. especially if you if anyone in our household knows anything about tech because I realized too that there are a lot of elders that may not be tech savvy, but we need to get the word to them because pretty much everywhere that Veolia has privatized water, uh, people have ended up fighting against it. Even if, even the people that thought initially it was a good idea, yeah. they realized that, that it's not and that how devastating privatization is to their community and end up fighting against it. So it's good to know this so that, that we can just fight in that direction from the beginning. Yeah. So it's vitally important. It is. So how can people 
get involved and help the uh, you know like it sounds like right here in Michigan we're working on statewide legislation um we just did a whole show about it last night uh, to make sure that water is safe and affordable for everyone that it uh remains a commons things like that um what can people do to get involved what's the resistance look like now and how can people check in and, and help yeah um I, I think the the big thing is to try and notice um some of these issues before they actually happen it, um, it feels like uh, a lot of the times uh, in our work here in Pennsylvania, it, it ends up being reactive. We, we see that the, the local board is um, considering privatizing their sewer water system uh, kind of late into the process. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, like really paying attention to the, the local news, I think, is a big first step. I, I think a, a lot of... Um, a lot of attention is paid to the, the national politics and it's important, but... Um, you know, a lot of these these municipal meetings, I think, um, have a, a really big impact on, on people's lives. Um, and then also reaching out to uh, federal and state legislators uh, about some of these uh, affordability issues. Um, I, I think we we could stand to to have more direct funding for uh, water and wastewater systems um, in that that federal funding in particular has has been going down since the 70s, I believe. Yeah. Um, so being able to, you know, fully upgrade our, our water and, um, systems and have, have safe water for people, I think would be really great. And that, that is something that the federal government could do more of. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then reaching out to state legislators as well. A, a lot of the, the final implementation is, ends up being in the, the state, uh, legislature, and, uh, making sure they're aware of these issues, um. Uh, especially this fair market value legislation is in, I think, about 15 states right now. And I, I'd like to see it not spread anymore. So, Absolutely. We're going to have um, some links down below in the, just for our viewers so that you know. We're going to have some links down below so you can go and you can learn a lot more about this um, and, and figure out, you know, ways that you can step in and help. Um, it always matters when... Uh, from state to state, we're showing solidarity with each other, especially when we're going through the same things. Yes. Um, and to be able to uh, show legislators and, you know, it also community members who are, you know, not sure how to plug in, to be able to show that kind of solidarity is so important. So I'm uh, hoping that we can do just that, you know, and, um, and we're definitely going to be sharing stuff in the uh, description box down below for folks to check more stuff out. Is there um, before any final thoughts before we wrap up? Like, what um, what do folks need to know? Yeah, um, I just kind of want to tell my particular story in in Tom Benson. Um, Please. So we um, we 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 went to all the meetings and we kept telling the the board at the time to to not sell the sewer system. Um, and they, they still sold it um, to uh, Next Era Energy at first. Um, and then we went through this extraordinary effort of um, actually rewriting our township charter, uh, which was like a thousand signatures and um, two elections. No small thing and, to rewrite and, the township charter. <laughs> yeah. That's huge. Um, <laughs> and all uh, this like government study commission and... Um, it was really like a constitutional convention for our, our township that was very specific to we wanted to um, enshrine the, the right to, to public uh, water. And even through all that, our, our township board, the majority, is still uh, trying to go through the sale. Um, so I, I think at least it shows that it, there's a lot of um, potential solidarity in, in a movement like this. I, I, yeah. Uh, just like politically, the township I live in is about 50-50 Democrat and Republican. And you have people saying, I, I voted for Republicans all my life and I hate water privatization. And then you also have people saying, I'm a literal communist and I hate privatization. And they, they're all working together to to keep this this public asset. Um, so I, I, I really do have uh, some hope that there's um, some common good that we can, can push for here. Oh, Kofi. What um what are some what what do people need to know? What are your final thoughts? 
Um, yeah. Um, just to, to tell the, the story of Intel Menson, uh, we uh, went to a, a lot of these meetings and uh, a lot of the residents were telling our, our township supervisors not to sell the, the system. Uh, they sold it um, anyways to um, Next Era Energy at first. Um, and then we, we went through this extraordinary effort of um, rewriting our, our township charter, uh, which uh, required getting thousands of signatures and, and going through to um, referendums and electing a government study commission. Uh, and even though we passed uh, this charter that um, prohibited the, the privatization of water and, and wastewater systems, our, um, the majority of the township board is still intent on um, going through with this. Um, and uh, I think it's a huge shame too because uh, Tal Menson has a like a 50 50 split between Republicans and Democrats and you had these uh, people that were saying that they voted for Republicans for 50 years and the other people that are communists that were saying I, I really want to protect this community asset and to have that like um, common good and common goal um, stifled by a, a few politicians was upsetting to me. Yeah, I think that that just shows how vitally important it is uh, that regardless of being Republican or Democrat, having different political views or which I'm sure also means like it, it goes across race barriers, that all these people, regardless of their differences, realize that this one common enemy is against their community and want to fight to prevent or remove privatization from their community is just vitally important. It's not a lot of issues that all of us can agree upon with right. different political views, different cultural and racial backgrounds. But knowing that this one common thing is something that all of these people came together on just shows people how vitally important it is to fight against privatization if they don't have it already and if they do to you know it's it's one thing too that uh you'll see from all of the i've been i've been a part of a lot of water struggles mm. the last 15 years a lot of water struggles and it's the one thing that brings us all together it really is it's the one thing where especially right here we're fighting a, a pipeline that runs through the great lake great lakes it's um it's uh, line five it's enbridge tar sands pipeline terrible ooey gooey terrible stuff to be running through the great lakes and that was the one thing it, it that brought it did everybody it didn't matter what side of the political aisle you were on uh whether you were affluent or extremely poor any of that you could say you could say oh yeah we don't want that sticky tar like oil running through the great lakes we you, it was the one thing that brought us together and that's um you know it seems like that's exactly what kind of what went down there it's uh it's good to see it's good to see people come together um if water's going to do that then we'll, you know <laughs> but it's such an important struggle and such an important point nicole um well we really are looking forward to sharing this with community and getting it out there and getting people activated to help and learn more um it's a great conversation you've been doing so much work i uh when i looked you up i the work that you do, it looks like you, you, you do it all day, every day, and you don't stop. So I really, really appreciate um, that tenacity in this work. Thank you. Thank you. To our listeners um, at home, these really difficult times, try to look out for each other. Um, try to take care of each other as best as you can and try to stay afloat. Take care. Bye. Bye. Started it, invented it, water needed to swim in it, more valuable than oil. Be careful, homie, you're spilling it. <laughs>